This is a joint GE CSIRO event and uh, whilst our organisations have worked together for, for many years in the past, this is the first time we've had an event like this. I'd like to, to really talk about this revolution we're going through, this digital industrial revolution that we're embarking on. We're the only organisation in the nation that collaborates deeply with all 41 universities and also over 3,000 companies. So it, it strikes us that that's the natural place for us to be that bridge to do more than just science, to do science and deliver solutions. We're talking about disruption, we're talking about uh, revolution. We're not communicating, we're not collaborating, uh, but inside us are these creative beings, these little children that want to hold hands and the digital practitioners your business is connecting, your business is communicating, your front and centre of the revolution. So Predix is the platform that, that we're building within GE and it's really the sum of many years of work that we've had internally around software. In order to connect assets to the cloud, we need to do so securely. So they recognized early on that we needed a security foundation in order to build the industrial internet. And so GE acquired WorldTech over two years ago and we're a fully integrated part of the GE digital family. The amount of time it takes between a compromise or an intruder into your organization in this highly connected space, um, between that point and the time that the victim learns of a breach, it's, it's over a hundred days. Our challenge uh, in the industry is that uh, we're somewhat tethered to our past and our own understanding of what technologies can do and what we're comfortable with. Uh, health is so far behind in the digital space compared to most other industries. So we have this problem of lack of systems talking to one another. The new Digital Health Agency, which commences on the 1st of July, uh, has a, a number of key focus areas which will change that. One of the things that's really critical is the importance of being internationally linked, looking at all the different things that are happening around our sparse sparsely populated country and bringing them all together to be able to create a, a, the go-to place so that small companies can link in with our connections with multinationals such as General Electric to help them be able to realise their opportunity of being part of the global supply chain. These days there isn't a single company out there who can't be watching what's happening in their sector because disruption is happening around us whether you like it or not and some of those sectors can be disrupted at greater rates and you may find that your customer base has changed and evolved in, in a way that you haven't kept up with. We used to take the view that we had all the answers ourselves. We're 350,000 people. We thought we probably could do all of our own internal research and development. But we now know that we don't have all the answers and collaborating is absolutely the key to, key to success. And I would say if you really got ambition, think about technology that's truly globally scalable. Some people say innovation is the most overused word and it's become a little bit of a buzzword, and it probably has, but this is the kind of thing that drives cultural change. That means it becomes part of our DNA every day. I have a really sort of a financial services lens to what's happening with disruption, and I can tell you the banks are being taken to pieces all around the world. Um, we're moving very quickly to a point where new companies and new startups that no one ever would have envisaged in the past would be able to do certain types of financial products are coming in to, to act in that space and they're doing it much better. I think um, I look at my smartphone and I see a phone that's got sensors in it that are wired into a big data platform and some applications that let me do cool stuff. And I think a smart city should be broadly the same sort of idea. So it's a city that's embedded with sensors that collect information, that's housed in a big data platform, such as GE's Predix one, and then translate it in a way that's user-friendly and intuitive through front-end applications. It's really about the intersection of the things that we've talked about, technology, um, um, sensors, robotics, autonomous systems, um, combined with, with, with data. We, we are starting from a very good place in Australia and that we lead. We've got a world-class education, uh, you know, we've got world-class intellectual capacity. So we've got the framework in place. So it's really just creating the environment and the condition to go to the next step to translate that to commercial outcomes. The next 15 to 20 year compute cycle is going to be about the intersection of those technologies and industry. And it's going to be those industries that are Australia's strength industries. So it's going to be agriculture, mining, transportation, healthcare. 
there's just an enormous opportunity for Australia, um, playing to our strengths and thinking not only domestically, but also thinking regionally. Smart and intelligent buildings is really about not just um, doing things for energy savings, but it's the data and the further information and further improvements to that building that you can get from it. And that's what a smart city is about. It's not uh, just about having technologies, it's about making people's lives better.